Good Saturday morning, everyone. Welcome back to Weather on the Go, all your weather coverage. In today's video, I'll be tracking an energetic storm system set to bring a tornado outbreak across the deep south as we get in toward the middle of next week, followed by a very cold plunge of Arctic temperatures across the United States and Canada as we get into the first and second week of December. If you guys are new to the channel and have yet to subscribe, hit the subscribe button down below and the notification bell to get all of my weather forecasts updates here on this channel again you i cover the united states i cover canada and the tropics so definitely hit the subscribe button down below and the notification bell to get all of my daily weather forecast updates on this channel looking here right now at the visible satellite imagery across the united states we definitely see a couple of things here we have a cut off low pressure system across the deep south in the southern plains that's bringing all that snowfall across portions of new mexico into west texas also some heavy rainfall across east texas and getting into the Gulf Coast states as well. But up to the north, we got a trough digging in across the Pacific Northwest, and that is going to cause trouble across the deep south as we go into the middle of next week. That is the storm system starting to take shape across those areas as we get in towards next week. So looking here at the overall jet stream, this is the 500 millibar uh, jet stream. This is the mid-level jet. We have a cutoff low pressure system across the southern plains, and that's why we're not really seeing much movement with this low pressure system and why we've been seeing a a lot of unsettled weather across the deep south and the southern plains over this the late portion of this week and now we're going into the weekend this will finally start to push off to the east as we go into your sunday morning sunday afternoon time frame as it kind of starts to re-emerge into the jet stream here as we go into the eastern united states across the mid-atlantic and the southeast going into sunday and sunday night so that will be something to keep an eye on but looking here at your overall temperatures these are your high temperatures forecasted this afternoon saturday November 26th across the United States. Lots of 50s being felt across portions of the Midwest, the Great Lakes, even up here into portions of New England. We also do see some 60s down here across the majority of the deep south and the southeast. Some lower and middle 80s can be found from central and south Florida. And again, some cooler weather across the upper elevations across the uh, west uh, into places like western Montana, Idaho, getting back into Wy uh, Wyoming, into the Colorado areas as well. Going into your Sunday, November 27th here tomorrow, we have that warmer air that will start to move off to the east here with the storm system bringing more of these 50s and 60s across the east some 70s down here across coastal Georgia getting into portions of the Carolinas so that will be a welcome sight for a warm up again some cooler temperatures can be found across the northern and northwestern United States as we go into your Sunday but looking here today the day one categorical outlook from the storm prediction center does spell out a risk for some severe weather a lower end level one of five marginal risk can be found across portions here of New Orleans Orleans, getting over into southern Mississippi, southern Alabama, and the western Florida panhandle here. This is where we could see some isolated, strong to severe storms that could be producing a couple of tornadoes. We have a 2% shading here of tornadoes around the New Orleans region, Mobile, Alabama, and then getting over there toward Panama City, Florida. So we definitely have to keep an eye on that. Maybe a brief spin-up tornado or two with some of these storms along the immediate Gulf Coast later on today. Also looking at the wind risk of a 5% shading there as well. We could have some damaging winds approaching 60 miles per hour this afternoon and evening across these areas here um, across the immediate Gulf Coast. And then all areas are less than 5% for large hail. Again, we don't have a lot of instability in the environment, so I, I don't think hail will be an overall big uh, event with this system, but I do think there could still be some small hail, uh, maybe pea size to penny size hail, definitely still possible across some of those areas. So let's track that out here later on today. We definitely have some heavy rainfall across portions of Oklahoma getting over into Arkansas. Lots of thunderstorm activity across uh, Louisiana and to western Mississippi. That will start to move off to the east as well as a line of storms will be racing through the New Orleans region, getting down into portions of southern Mississippi, southern Alabama, getting in toward around the Mobile, Alabama area, Panama City, and then maybe over as far east as Tallahassee later on um, into the evening hours. We got some just normal rain showers, some rumbles of thunder farther to the north across the Lake of the Ozarks in Missouri downstate Illinois, getting up there toward Paducah, Kentucky, Memphis, Tennessee, some of those areas, seeing some scattered rain showers. And this system will all start to move off to the east as we get toward the middle of the morning into the early afternoon on your Sunday time frame. 
just some deformation type of rainfall across portions of Illinois, Missouri, getting up here into the Ohio Valley. There will be some thunderstorms probably across the southern Ohio Valley from Kentucky down through the southeast here. A couple of these storms could be severe warned, so don't be surprised if you see some gusty winds out your door or see some heavier downpours. Definitely possibility as we go through your Sunday and Monday after or Sunday and Sunday afternoon time frame. And then as we go into Monday, yes, we're going to be seeing a lot of some rainfall across the northeast as we get into that time frame across Maine, Vermont, New Hampshire, and then just really much of New England. We could see some snow on the northern end of this across portions of southern Ontario, southern Quebec, Canada, and again, that could accumulate on the order of maybe one to two inches. I'm not expecting too much of a big snowstorm across this area with the lack of cold air with this system. But overall, through the next 72 hours, going through your Monday evening time frame on November 28th, you can see some widespread rainfall amounts here in the dark blue shaded colors. That's around a half inch to an inch of rain where you see the pinks and purples that is actually one to two inches of rain and then again here across coastal Texas getting into Louisiana we still could have a pocket there of two to three inches of rain going through the next 72 hours then we have to talk about our next storm system digging in across the Pacific Northwest here this weekend and really starting to take shape as we get into the Monday, November 28th time frame. We got a large trough digging down across the Pacific Northwest. This is going to be bringing a lot of those, uh, you know, active jet stream type winds across the Pacific Northwest, some windier conditions. We have a ridge across the Northeast Pacific, so this will force that trough farther south. As we go into Tuesday, that trough will eventually start to move east across the plains here, across the Great Plains and across the Rockies, and that will spell trouble across the deep south as we go into later on Tuesday afternoon and Tuesday evening as we have a very warm environment as we go into that time frame and then eventually that trough will eject into the mid-Mississippi Valley and Ohio Valley as we get to the middle of next week to round out the month of, of November on Wednesday, November 30th. Looking at the overall jet stream and what I found interesting is that the system has trended a little bit less organized than what has recently been thought here over the last couple of days. And what I mean by that is the polar jet to the north is going to be kind of loosely phasing with the uh, subtropical jet from the south. So these two jet streams are really not truly going to phase with one another. They'll be close to each other, but I don't think this is going to completely phase into one massive storm system that's going to bring a big blizzard or a huge snowstorm, huge rain event. But we will have severe weather, and that will be something we'll have to watch going into Tuesday with the subtropical jet feeding in here off the southern plains we have plenty of energy here in the kinematics in the wind energy uh, department for definitely some severe weather and the day five probability outlook from the storm prediction center does show that 15 to 30 percent shading across the dixie alley region getting across the deep south here really centered on North Louisiana, Southern Arkansas, and Western Mississippi. However, the trends have been that some of the models are shifting this just a little bit farther to the east, and I wouldn't be surprised in the Storm Prediction Center's Day 4 risk that this enhanced moves a little bit farther to the east across more of Western Alabama into much of Central Mississippi and then maybe into Northeastern portions there of Louisiana. So we'll just have to wait and see how that works out. But look at here at what we could expect for the severe weather. That slight risk is a level two of five and then you have that enhanced risk a level three of five here in those yellow and orange shaded areas again that's an increased to high confidence that we could have severe weather with isolated to scattered potentially even some numerous severe storms can be expected normally for an enhanced risk you only see those here usually once or twice per year in any given area so this is actually a little bit more uncommon so this has to be taken seriously especially when it's given four days out from the event so that is something Thing to keep an eye on. But looking here at your Tuesday, then the reason why we're seeing this setup is we have a very powerful cold front here trailing the storm system, and we have all the colder temperatures to the north and west. We got highs in the teens and the 20s across the portions of Mon Montana, getting through much of the Rocky Mountains. But ahead of the storm system, we're going to have a lot of juice in the atmosphere. We're going to have temperatures rising into the 60s and 70s. Wouldn't even be surprised if we saw some low 80s across coastal Texas, coastal Louisiana, as we go into late Tuesday afternoon afternoon here for peak daytime heating. 
as we go into the afternoon as well, we're going to have that open Gulf of Mexico moisture trailing to uh, some moisture from south to north across this area, and we'll have dew points rising well into the 60s and low 70s. That will provide some instability to the environment, but it's not really the instability I'm too concerned about. It's really the kinematics with this storm system. The wind energy is very impressive. This is the 200 millibar uh, layer here. This is the upper level jet, as you think here, of the atmosphere as a cake. We're going to look at the atmosphere from the top down. And yeah, there's some very impressive winds here showing up around 110, 120 knots in the upper levels. The mid-level jet is definitely pretty impressive in the 500 millibar layer rounding the base of this trough here. Um, a lot of wind energy here, again, 80 to 90 knots here worth of shear. And then we have to look at the low-level jet here where we could see some spin-up tornado potential and some tornadic storms. Um, uh, in the 850 millibar layer here, we definitely have winds around 50, maybe even 60 knots, especially up into the Ohio Valley. But trailing down here across the deep south as well. So that will be something to watch as we get a little bit closer to this event. So looking at what the radar could look like, just using the European high resolution forecast guidance here, we could have some supercell thunderstorms breaking out as early as late morning or early afternoon, potentially on uh, Tuesday, according to this model across Arkansas, Far East Texas, getting into Louisiana, but really building farther to the east across the mid Mississippi Valley here and then getting down into the deep south. We could be talking about here a tornado outbreak as we go into Tuesday afternoon, Tuesday evening here. So definitely want to be on high alert. We could have individual supercells that could be producing tornadoes, even some strong tornadoes across this area before we start to see this move off to the east and start to form more of a squall line going into your Wednesday morning. Speaking of Wednesday, these are your high temperatures. That cold front will continue to progress off to the east. We have the warmer temperatures in the 60s and 70s. Plenty of juice yet again for some severe weather, especially when considering those dew points rise rising back into the 50s and 60s, even some low 70s across the uh, far southeastern United States from the Carolinas through Georgia and Florida. So that will be something to watch. We still have the a strong wind energy, a very uh, very um, energetic environment here. The 500 millibar layer still showing up with the mid-level jet of around 110 knots across the Ohio Valley and a very formidable low-level jet in the 850 millibar layer as well, overlapping that. So that's where I could see maybe some embedded supercells along the squall line. But I do think Wednesday will be more of a day for damaging winds and heavy rainfall than hail and tornadoes. So we'll continue to watch this, but that will be something to monitor. But farther to the north, we could be talking about some snow across southeastern Canada here into Ontario and Quebec. Could be a few inches of snow accumulated there as we get into Wednesday with some of that colder air. But yes, we got a lot of heavy rainfall on the way through the next 120 hours going all the way through the very end of November here for, through Wednesday, November 30th. This is your rainfall accumulation here across the deep south and a lot of these areas here across Mississippi, Alabama, North Georgia, Tennessee, getting back here into Louisiana in those red shaded colors. We'll see rainfall amounts at least of two inches, if not up to four inches in some areas localized. And then up into the Ohio Valley, into the pinks and purples, here we go. That's where we see one to two inches of rainfall accumulation going all the way through the next few days. And this is some good news because the U.S. Drought Mitigation Center here is actually showing this map here on November 22nd. And there still is a lot of drought across these very same areas across the southeast and southern United States um, with those orange shaded colors here. That's a moderate to severe severe drought starting to develop. So that is some good news. We're going to get some rainfall. We just don't need it all at once. But again, like I said, the cold side of the system, we're going to see some snowfall across the northwestern side here with the colder air moving in from north to south. Could have a couple of inches of accumulation across northern Wisconsin, getting into Minnesota around the Twin Cities area and getting back here toward the Rockies. A lot of rocky mountain snow across the ski resorts across these areas as well as we round out the month of uh, November. And that holds true with the GFS still showing that as well. Well, a little less bullish with the accumulation. I do actually agree with the GFS model with a little bit lighter of accumulations here in the U.S. with this system. I think the lack of moisture without the system phasing like I was talking about before fully, I do think we're going to see less in the way of a snow, uh, a snow track with this system. So that will be something to watch as well. But behind this system here, we're going to have a lot of cold air. I've been talking about this for a while now. We got that polar vortex starting to come back here as well um, through that uh, December 1st through the December 5th time frame time frame. We definitely have a lot of those colder temperatures starting to dig in across the Pacific Northwest and upper Midwest here, likely below normal across these regions while the Southeast is above normal during that period. 
And it does have some staying power. We could have some colder temperatures across a lot of these same areas across the northern and northwestern United States going all the way through the second week in December or going through Friday, December 9th with the warmer air across the southeast with those ridges here with these storm systems going through that time frame. It will be active. We have a lot of green showing up on the map, so there's going to be several storm systems we'll have to watch. Some of these storm systems will be originating from the lee of the Rockies here and moving across the mid-Mississippi Valley. Some of these storm systems will originate across Texas and move up across the Ohio Valley here during the first couple of days and couple of weeks here of December. So that will be something to monitor. Some snow events, some rain events, and yes, some possible severe weather events as well on the warm side of those storms. But like I said, the polar vortex is coming back with a vengeance as we go into the first couple of weeks here in December. This is Thursday, December 1st here as we start to uh, turn the calendar from November to December. This polar vortex is going to start to make headway into the North Pacific Northwest and Southwestern Canada during that time. And it really starts to take shape across much of Canada and bleeding into the Northwestern United States as we go towards Saturday, December 3rd, especially when we have that very strong ridge across the Aleutian Islands. That's going to force a lot of this colder air farther south into the Northern and Northwestern United States. And here's your temperatures during that time frame for Thursday, December 1st. This, these are your high temperatures. Yes, we could be below zero for much of the Southern and Southwestern Canada for daytime highs. Wind chills will be even colder than that. And then across the United States, across North Dakota, Minnesota, and Wisconsin, high temperatures there in the teens and 20s. And then this will get a little bit colder as we get in towards that Friday, December 2nd time frame. Again, we have the warmer temperatures to the south and east, the colder temperatures up into the northwest. And again, some of this cold air will eventually start to move in a, a little bit farther towards the northern plains and the inner mountain west as we go into the next weekend on December 3rd time frame. So definitely have to watch that as we get a little bit closer. Thank you guys so much for watching. Definitely appreciate it. If you guys liked the video, hit the uh, thumbs up but button down below. Definitely appreciate it. Um, again, leave any comments, questions, and concerns below. Get to those later on today. And subscribe to the YouTube channel, guys. Thanks for all the new subscribers out there. I definitely appreciate it. Uh, hit the notification bell to get all of my daily weather forecast updates. Thank you guys so much for watching. Have a great weekend, and I'll see you all in the next video.